Um, so, I am a business development manager for Urbana University, and my core responsibility is to gain business relationships with uh, the larger employers, the employers in areas of Western Ohio. I mean, Urbana is about not over half an hour away. But I also represent Franklin University. Franklin bought Urbana over four years ago and has invested over $35 million in the facility, the operations, staff, et cetera. It's a beautiful campus. My traffic jam is deer. It's wooded, it's beautiful. It's a fun little town. Um, not as pretty as Troy, but it's a beautiful old historical Ohio town. There's lots and lots of them out there, very pretty. But um, So that's what I do, but in addition to that, it's really workforce development, right? We partner with, and I'll probably jump ahead, but we partner with the local community colleges and provide pathways for students. We do CCP, provide education college courses in high school, so we have major programs all over Ohio to support the workforce um, structure and development. So the reason I'm talking about workforce development is because I support eight people in Western Ohio. So I have insights and experiences with other chambers and other workforce development focused groups and committees. So I'm sharing ideas and things that I learned from other groups because I think it's fascinating. And I, I've always been brought up with that teamwork, brainstorming kind of attitude. We all succeed if, if we all share ideas. So that's my, that's the, the tone of this, that's the purpose. What you're doing is awesome. I'm not, you know, just offering you other ideas and experiences that I've seen in the other counties. So that's what this is, that's what this is about. Any questions about my role or Urbana or the areas? Okay. So, um, <coughs> Ohio manufacturing is huge in the United States. We employ over 700,000 employees. Ohio alone represents $100 billion in revenue concerning manufacturing. Um, we, we dominate the exports of the United States. Isn't that cool? Um, we, uh, manufacturing in Ohio, fully recovered from the 2008 recession. Um, and we're on track to reclaim the number one global manufacturing competitiveness position from China over the next few years. And these charts show the increase in manufacturing and the decrease of the employment availability of employees for the manufacturers. Um, there's been a lot of write-ups and articles and books about it. Um, the global race, Ohio's right in there. Right? We're, we are leaders. What's, what's happening in the manufacturing world is um, our, our youth, a lot of people think a plant is just an awful dirty plant, and that is not the case. They have high technology equipment in these plants, and so people need to be quite educated and have like more of an engineering talent and mindset and education. There's 3D printing. There are robots literally right next to another human being partnering. So, you know, 10 years ago there was no way that was happening, right? You'd stay away from equipment. So things are changing. We're able to um, x-ray products to also look for defects in 3D. I mean, so the technology is astounding. Um, the internet of things, right? That's now an old term, but um, you know, does anyone remember the days where Wi-Fi was not anywhere, right? <laughs> um, so things are changing. Um, the Fourth Industrial Revolution is a book written by Klaus Schwab. He is the founder and chairman of the World Economic Forum. Um, he's from Germany, but um, that's what some of these uh, key points are from. So what we have happening is the perfect storm. <clears throat> The employment rate is the lowest it's been in 18 years. Manufacturing is growing at the fastest pace it's ever been. Um, baby boomers, unfortunately, are preparing to retire, and there's that negative perception of um, manufacturing. Our responses are good. Do you have you have STEM programs in your high schools, right? Of course, that's awesome. Um, we training centers. We have awesome community colleges in this area, no question, um, and we partner with. And, and uh, employers are reinvesting in 
um, internships and co-ops. So they have educated young people that they can hire as permanent employees. Um, and new technology is a huge impact, as I stated earlier. Um, it's enabling our employees to be safer in these plants, um, more productive and more precise, but they require very specific skills. So of course, our government, state, federal governments are all involved in trying to help us build the workforce. Um, part of the budget bill language here is the career services to students may include, but are not limited to, job shadowing, internships, co-ops, <coughs> apprenticeships, career exploration activities, problem-based curriculum development uh, developed to align the in-demand jobs. And so that's what I'm gonna focus on here uh, with some of my examples. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into those. So locally, you've got all these great community colleges. I know that the TDC does, um, has an awesome career day just just last, this week? Last week? Who's this week? Um, it's great, they had over 600 students, over 45 companies involved in helping students understand what they need to go into different careers. That didn't exist when I was a kid. That'd be great. I didn't have a clue when I graduated from college. Um, they have a job fair. They have this awesome website, Career Connect, where students can actually, there's a lot of things you can do on Career Connect, but specifically focused on students, they can actually see where they might be able to job shadow or get an internship, things like that. So I think that's really brilliant. Well, what else is going on in this community pertaining to connecting our youth to careers? Are there other big events you can <coughs> mention or tell me about? <laughs> I'm not asking you while you're eating. Is there a manufacturing day here in this area? Are there summer camps that focus on maybe engineering and things like that? So those things like that are happening? Great, awesome. I didn't find them on the internet, so that's why I'm asking. Um, so here's starting some of the examples. In Licking County, they have career and technical centers uh, working together with um, 20 local manufacturers and companies. Um, started small, has grown big. They're working, um, in the schools doing presentations so the companies come into the schools and do presentations about careers and they tell them the income starting and they tell them the potential career income growth um, and then they do um, company tours so that's that's Lincoln County um, Sandusky County does um, celebrating manufacturing day they tour facilities, they have open houses, and they include the parents. We're finding that the parents are part of the log jam. <laughs> parents are saying, oh, that sounds horrible, working in a plant or factory. So we have to educate them about the high technology that's in these plants, the, the challenging careers that their kids could have. And so this is more of a, more of a one day event example in Sandusky. Um, in Champaign County, our YMCA has a science camp, and you said that's that kind of thing's going on here too. Um, day camp, four or five days that week. Um, we have a design challenge. Um, if you guys remember what Rube Goldberg is, the funny cartoonist, he was actually, uh, oh gosh, was he an architect or an engineer? He was incredibly um, trained and educated, but he became well known for his cartoons. Um, it's funny inventions. Anyway, we um, worked with volunteer engineers from our local employers and manufacturers to advise and create a challenge between all the high school students, all the high schools. And so the advisors were assigned to one school and they worked with several groups. And whoever won that group came to the final challenge between each school. And so to say it was a one-day event isn't true because they had all those challenges and the time to build. The challenge was to um, create something Rube Goldberg-esque with many stages with uh, things that you don't have to buy, just um, trash, things that exist, and to, um, to lift their school flag. That was the challenge. Um, so 
then on the challenge day, they either have to have a video of the successful raising of their flag colors or demonstrate it. But because they use things like trash and plastic milk bottles and things like that, it was hard to transport and then reset up. So a lot of them were videos um, shown. But the manufacturers had displays and tables at that event too for more conversation and interaction. Um, lots of high schools today have STEM programs. It's outstanding. Um, I know now kids that are graduating from high school with their associate's degree going into college starting a junior year, which is exciting. And then summer camps. So I'm going to focus on summer camps. I recently attended Sherrod Brown's initiative to have manufacturing summer camps. And I want to say this. I'm not promoting anything political, politically. What I am, again, I'm promoting those ideas. And it, I don't think it has to be a manufacturing camp. It can be career camp or you can name it whatever you want. Um, it can have a day of healthcare with hospitals involvement or safety, you know? So I think you can make anything what you want it to be. Um, there are probably nine or 10 counties that were, um, that attended this, um, this uh, summit meeting that uh, Sheriff Brown had led. Um, Springfield calls theirs nuts, bolts, and thingamajigs. Warren, Mansfield, and Tuscarora's County was more of Manufacturing Institute program, Manufacturing Summer Camp, a little less uh, exciting name. Um, what I thought was cool was they all focused on 7th to 8th graders to help 7th and 8th graders to get a vision for where they could go, what they needed to study, where. What I like about this, I'm involved in the uh, Mental Health and Recovery Board of Union County where I live. And I know that if we empower our kids with a self-confidence and a goal and a vision of what they can do with themselves in their lives, that's helping them avoid drugs and temptations. And so to me, that's one of the reasons why I get energized about this kind of stuff. Get them while they're younger, and, and, but still have that capacity to really understand what this stuff means. Um, so all school districts were included. Um, all kind, all the, look at all the sponsors at the bottom of this uh, sample flyer. It was all the companies in the area involved. And what I thought was awesome was their curriculum was not go see the factory to see what the item was created or built or made. They had a sessions on safety, leadership, purchasing. Products have to have go through product development. Accounting and pricing has to price the products, right? So the students learned all of those all those steps in the process of the product, which I thought was really cool. Um, the technology, the design, um, quality, quality assurance, marketing the products, the environment, life skills, robotics. And I have the um, Manufacturing Camp Summit notebook. Um, if you want, I can make copies of all this. So this is all the sample flyers, sample agendas. Uh, sample budgets, sample letters that they sent out to all the local companies to raise money for it. Uh, manufacturers could either be involved and actually provide the tour and create the tour experience for the students for summer camp. The tours were about an hour and a half, two hours, so they could do one in the morning for summer camp or one in the afternoon, or they could just donate money to help support this event. So that's what this notebook is, is it's it's the people that presented at that summit meeting and all of their examples of what they used and did. So if you want me to make a big copy, I can make a copy for you. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Any questions about this Manufacturing Day Summit? So here's numbers talk in my mind. Numbers talk. So before summer camp, Dover Chemical was one of the companies involved with this particular example. Uh, surveyed the kids, do you want to work in manufacturing? And 76% no and heck no. <laughs> After the summer camp experience, would you now consider working in manufacturing? 78% said yes, because they now understand what it is, right? Um, were you satisfied overall with the summer camp experience? 4.7 rating out of five from kids? I think that's impressive. And then 71% said they were satisfied. So. These, this is literally me with my phone taking pictures of their presentation, so I apologize for the poor quality. But what you're looking at is Spangler, 
Dum Dum Candy Suckers Manufacturing Plan. And the students going through the experience that they planned for them to have in the plant. And one of the most difficult things that the um, students experienced was the packing challenge. There's actually high technology used in packaging. Did you know that? You probably do, because of <laughs> welding plastics, making plastics stick. So sealing the packages, they found a new technological approach to seal the package with less uh, plastic package waste, right? Um, profit and loss is what it's about. So every way you can save, make things safer, less expensive. So it was, I, I just found that fascinating. Product development, quality assurance, flavor testing. So those kids got a lot out of the uh, Dum Dum Sucker plan. Then at the end of the summer camp, in this case, this example, they have graduation day. Those kids got a diploma. It was signed by Sherrod Brown. But again, you could do things your own way. It could be signed by your mayor. It could be, you know, it could be the principal of the high school. Um, but they had a big graduation day, and that got the parents there. Parents aren't going to miss graduate today. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. <clears throat> very, very well attended. And they weren't done yet. They had a festival the next day. <clears throat> if, if the students or anybody went to every booth, which all the manufacturers and employers were at every, had stations here at the festival, if you went to every single station and marked, got your little card marked, you got free ribs. They had two rib um, food trucks there. Kind of a competition, friendly competition. Um, but it was motivation to help continue that communication between employer and potential employee. So I, I thought that this was an excellent example to help us think big, maybe. Um, so what's that have to do with the Rand University? What are we doing? Um, so I need, to, I need to share with you what we're doing. Um, according to the Georgetown Center of Education and Workforce, 64% of Ohio jobs in 2020 will require a post-secondary education. And that's again from that fourth industrial revolution. Um, statistically, uh, the closest chart I could find was Dayton and it went up to Troy for this example. 9.5% of uh, people have their associate's degree, 16.3% have their bachelor's. And then if we think about the earnings, if, the high, if you have a high school education, your earnings median, the median um, is 27,000 a year. If you have some college, it's 31,000 a year. And uh, if you have a bachelor's degree, it goes all the way up to 48.9, 49,000 a year income. So um, not everybody has to have a bachelor's degree to have a successful life and career, no. Absolutely not. Um, but uh, so um, Urbana University is involved in educational partnerships. As I said, we have over 230 um, community college partnerships across the country. Uh, we call it two plus two or three plus one. Get your associates, go to work. If you want to complete your degree, you don't even have to leverage Urbana. You could use Franklin University online to complete your degree. If you have lots of um, technical education and certification, you can round that out with a business degree so that you're a management person. Um, I mean, there's lots of things that you can do with your career <laughs> and education. Um, statistically, companies spend over $25,000 at least if it's a bad hire, if it's a bad, it just doesn't work out. Um, and because of that bad hire, or employee, they experience a 30% drop in that team performance that's affected by that experience. And it requires at least 22.9 days to replace the bad hire. I would think that number would be higher. Um, so we are uh, very focused on an internship and co-op program. Every student that goes to Urbana University should graduate with an in either an internship or a co-op experience. That's our goal. That's our intention. That's our goal. Um, companies can preview who they're hiring, right? And they can train them for what they want. They can mold this person to be what they want in the, in the plant at the company. Um, 
you're teaching students work, workplace etiquette, professionalism. Um, they're teaching them the newest technologies. I guarantee they'll absorb it quicker than I would. Um, and the company would be helping to pay for college for that student. Um, I can tell you that Dr. Washington, the president of Urbana University, has a true and sincere passion for trying to get college costs down to help students. And these are, these are close to his heart. This is, this is a program he's really driving to help students pay for college. Um, so that you know and understand what else we're doing, I'm a part of a team that goes to and participates in human resource councils, several counties. Uh, business Advisory Council meetings in Madison and Champaign County, um, economic partnerships, jobs, a um, lot of meetings, talk about strategies um, and certain things to uh, help our community improve upon. We're involved in these things. Um, I just was involved in the Logan County Collaborative Committee last night. That's about 40 people, both school, government, and um, local companies trying to focus on workforce and economic Urbana University is working to build a curriculum uh, for manufacturing technologies. You know, it's not out now, but we're planning um, and hoping to um, create a degree in manufacturing technologies specifically to help feed the manufacturers and the businesses in the area. Um, so I worked to gather um, a group of advisors. So I literally have engineers from our you know, for Honda and all the local companies in our area to help advise and create that curriculum so it meets their needs. Other questions about an, our involvement in the community? Okay. Um, other ways to help college be more affordable, we have opportunity scholarships in 45 area high schools, and I believe we're touching this area. I have a list of all the high schools where those students can have a $10,000 scholarship we don't care about the family household income. It's a $10,000 scholarship that they can have because they go to the high school. Isn't that unbelievable? Right? That didn't exist when I had sending my son to college. Um, the student is required. There's a specific program they need to uh, focus on while they're in college to continue to earn that scholarship year after year. But the focus is give back. Teaching these kids to be well-rounded serve your community. That's the focus for the Opportunity Scholarship of students that are awarded that. Also, um, I represent specifically what's called Urbana Works, and we have a partnership with the Troy Chamber. Um, so any members and your employees can have a 20% tuition discount to attend Franklin University. Franklin University is entirely online. Their focus is the adult working student. Um, they have all kinds of degrees. Um, they are accredited, they are renowned, they are probably leaders in online education. They started in the 90s, so um, they've been around 113 years and have converted themselves to more of what is needed today, and that is an online education opportunity. So just because you're a member of the Troy Chamber, 20% tuition discount to Franklin, or your employees' dependents, to get a $9,000 scholarship and free books to Urbana University. Again, we're not, we don't need to know the family income for this scholarship. It's because you're a chamber, your company is a chamber member, okay? Um, and so if you wanted to look into this, this is the link that you would have to use. This initiates the coding, if you will, so that those discounts and things are applied. So those are some of the things we're doing in the community to help workforce development and economic development. Um, are there questions or anything 